Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the introduction to free CAD tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about the part design workbench. The first video in this series was about the part workbench which was used to create primitives and execute boolean operations. If you want to see that, I'll be posting a link to the video in the description here. I'll also be posting a list of the topics I'm going to cover in this video in the description as well. The part design workbench allows you to create more complex objects that would be difficult to create with primitive shapes, such as this FreeCAD uh, logo you see here. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on the different basic functions of the part design workbench, like creating sketches and creating constraints within sketches, and then um, subsequently creating objects or revolutions from those sketches. I'm also going to be talking about um, importing images into FreeCAD into two dimensions and creating sketches over the images to create objects so that you can create parts that you've scanned or taken picture to, pictures of or importing diagrams from the internet and creating 3D objects from those as well, which is very useful. Uh, there's a few things I want to cover real quick that I didn't cover in this last video. First of all, uh, recently I um, up upgraded to the most recent version of FreeCAD and um, I just wanted to mention that when you zoom in or out it'll zoom basically zoom out or zoom in relative to where your cursor is located that's a major difference I've noticed in the version the other thing I want to talk about that I didn't talk about last time is that these two bar these toolbars um, can be manipulated and moved around so if yours don't look like mine um, it's because I probably moved mine around to, to get them where I'm comfortable with. So I just thought I'd mention that before we began. So I noticed in the first video I didn't even talk about exporting um, finished objects, which was kind of the whole point for 3D printing. So I wanted to do a uh, quick explanation of how to export objects um, right now. So the first thing you need to do is select the object that you want to be exported and go to File, Export and you can choose wherever it is you want it to go and um, down here you can choose what type of file you want it to be exported as so um, .obj and .stl are the uh, two types of uh, mesh files that my 3D printer uses but there's also a lot of other different um, options for uh, exportation here so um, you can choose whatever it is you like and uh, then just go ahead and hit uh, save here. Since we're on the topic of exporting mesh files from finished objects, I wanted to talk a little bit about importing meshes um, and then transforming them into solid objects that you can manipulate and perform operations on. So there's a couple different ways to uh, import a mesh. The first is uh, going underneath file and importing it into your project and when you select uh, import or command I from the file pull down menu it gives you a list of uh, all your files and you can find where you, the mesh is located um, I'm just using the example I used for the exportation um, topic so go ahead and select open and the mesh will be uh, created in your project um, underneath whatever the file name was you can also go underneath the uh, work bench selection pane and choose a mesh design and you can choose to import a mesh from a file um, right here basically it does the exact same thing that we just did you can also choose to export a uh, mesh to file here as well so in order to convert this mesh into a solid object we need to go to the uh, selection screen again and choose a uh, part workbench and then to uh, convert this um, object or mesh into an object, we select it, go underneath the part pull down menu, and choose create shape from mesh. Now, when you choose create shape from mesh, this pop up um, will appear asking for the sewing tolerance. And if there's a lot of edges in the uh, mesh that you're transforming into an object, um, uh, the lower the number is, the greater resolution there is basically. But for um, for this object, um, it doesn't matter what tolerance I choose. So um, 0 0.10 is the default and it pretty much works for everything. So we'll go ahead and select that. And a uh, solid object, you'll see over here in the combo view, will be created 
uh, with 001 after it, the same name as the mesh that it was created from. And now if you look at the solid object here, you'll notice a bunch of different lines um, all over. And that's a result of the um, program kind of sewing together the object from all of the different points on the mesh. And that's how the uh, program creates solid objects from meshes, is by like sewing them together. And all these lines are uh, connecting all the different points together. And you can see here where this curve is located that the lines are going back and forth to all the other lines. And that's kind of how the um, mesh is uh, transformed into an object. So in the first section about the part design workbench, I'm going to be using sketches to create some random objects. But if you'd like to see examples of creating sketches over real objects with their um, actual sizing created from images that have been uh, scanned or pulled off the internet, that's going to be later on in the uh, video. I'll be talking about how to scale images to the correct size and import them into the program. And um, I'll have examples of uh, importing images um, as well. So getting to the part design workbench is just like getting to the part workbench using the um, workbench selection pull down menu right here and select part design. So you'll notice when you first get to the part design workbench this option in your combo view will be displayed asking to um, create a sketch or a cube or cylinder um, and you could use this uh, to create objects but uh, you can just go back to the model pane as well you can just ignore that. So you'll notice that a lot of these options here are grayed out and that's because these are all used in the creation of two-dimensional sketches. Creating sketches is the fundamental function of the part design workbench. If we press this button to create a two-dimensional sketch, it'll ask us uh, what orientation we would like. And these views here match exactly to the uh, views uh, here that we were talking about in the last video. You'll also notice there's an option here for offsetting the sketch. The offset of the sketch is the exact same thing as the placement of an object. Each face has its own positive and negative area. So for example, the front view or the back view here in this direction is negative and this direction is positive. And for the top view, this is positive and this is negative. And for the side view, this direction is positive and this direction is negative. And the movement corresponds exactly to the placement um, of objects like we talked about last time. So let's go ahead and create a sketch here. You'll notice when you create a sketch you'll be shown a screen detailing the um, axes of whichever view you selected. In this case we are looking at the z-axis and the um, y-axis here. You'll also notice over here on the combo view um, some options here for the sketch. In the project window here, you'll see a grid, and the grid can be used to snap um, sketches to um, exact points. And you can um, go underneath the edit control section here in the combo view and choose to either turn off the grid if you don't want to see it. You can also change the sizing of the grid by entering a number in the grid size box here. So you can go all the way down, I believe, to 0 0.0001 millimeters, which is one micrometer. And as you see, the accuracy um, is very, very small. So you can um, choose any number that you wish to enter into the grid size box here. You can also turn on snap to grid here. So when you create a sketch and you uh, zoom out enough, you'll notice that the um, edges of the uh, grid um, disappear after a certain distance. So if you want to, um, let's say you have a sketch that goes outside of the um, area with the grid, what you can do um, is uh, click the update button here. So when you press update, the um, grid is uh, only displayed in areas of the sketch that actually have an element within them. So for instance, this line. You can also turn on the um, auto update button here to um, automatically move the grid around uh, relative to the elements within the sketch. 
So this toolbar right here contains all the options for creating um, elements within the sketch. Uh, you can create a dot or a line, an arc, a circle, a conic section, a uh, multi-line, a uh, rectangle, a uh, polygon, and also a slot. And then there's some, awesome, some other options here as well. So if you want to create, um, for example, um, a line in the sketch, you would select the line button here and choose the uh, first point that you would like. And as you can see on the screen here, when you hover over the grid, it'll show you right next to the um, line um, icon there, the coordinates that you are currently, your cursor is currently over. So in this example, it's uh, over negative 20 by 30. And if you uh, look down here, it'll show you the current coordinates that you are hovering over in all three axes as well. So let's go ahead and make a, the first point on this line here. And you'll notice, after I make the first point, it'll display a number and an um, angle next to the um, cursor uh, in the line icon. And that's the distance from the first point that you make. And the angle is the, um, is the angle between the first point and the second point. So every Create Geometry option for the sketch in the Part Design window here will always display a um, distance measurement as well as an angle measurement next to the cursor when you're creating the object. And you'll notice, for example, like if I uh, make the first point on this uh, arc function here and I move it over, you can see the uh, change in the angle relative to the uh, first point here. So you can move around um, objects that you've already created in the sketch, either the entire object or a specific point, by just clicking the object and dragging it to move it around. Or if you want to make it longer or shorter, you can click one of the points and just click um, and drag it. And it'll show you the uh, position in the X and Y axes of the point that you're uh, currently moving around. Another important concept in the uh, part design window for sketching here is um, connecting points in um, the uh, sketch so that they create a uh, connected 3D object when you go to um, pad them, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So for example, let's say I have a line here and I want to connect another line going the other direction. In that case, I would move my cursor over to the first point here until a little dot is displayed next to my cursor, otherwise the uh, line would not be connected to the first line, basically. So we could click here and drag it over here, and if we want to make another line here, we would move over here until we see the dot, click it, and then move down to where we want it to be. So in order to create a uh, solid object, all the points have to be connected for the sketch, basically. Also, you can cancel an operation um, in the uh, sketch window here by just right-clicking that'll cancel out your operation. So you'll notice if I make a line here that the um, after I make the line the uh, line icon is still displayed next to my cursor and the program will continue to make lines when you click and um, when you click in the project window here until you um, right click to deselect the operation or to cancel out the operation. If you want to delete a line or any geometry you've made in the sketch you can do so by uh, either clicking the uh, line or um, geometry itself or clicking uh, one of the points and then just going up to the edit option here and clicking delete. You can also select multiple objects at once by clicking and dragging over whichever objects you would like to select and then you can go into the uh, edit delete menu and delete um, objects that way as well. I'll go ahead and sample each one of these Create Geometry options here real quick just to give you an idea of what they do. So the Create an Arc function basically creates a uh, segita for a spherical cap in the um, sketch based on the center of the circle um, and whatever radius you choose to connect two lines or anything else like that. So when you first click the Create an Arc uh, function here, It'll, uh, the first point you make will be for the center of the circle that you're creating. So let's say we want the uh, center of the circle to be uh, right here. And once you make your first click for the center of the circle, 
you can uh, drag the um, cursor until you get to either a point or um, a line or anything else and then once you see the little um, dot icon next to your cursor you can click to connect the points and if you want to move the center of the um, circle in order to get a different radius you can just click it and drag it and you'll notice that the lines will change as well to accommodate the uh, new radius. You can also click and drag the um, uh, spherical uh, cap itself uh, and click and drag to scale it up and down. Uh, create a circle is like creating an arc except that it creates an entire circle and you can use the center of the circle to connect to a uh, line or another point so that when you move that line or that point the circle goes with it and once you make the uh, circle you can click on the um, outer edge of the circle to change the radius or you can click the center of the circle and drag it to uh, move the center around basically so if you click the uh, create a conic section in the sketch here um, the default option is to create an ellipse so the first click like when creating a circle is to choose the center of the ellipse and the next click is to determine the uh, either semi-major uh, radius or the uh, semi-minor axis. So let's go ahead and uh, just click over here to make the first axis uh, length. And then you can uh, click and drag to make the second point, uh, be it the uh, semi-major axis or semi-minor axis, whatever kind of ellipse that you're making. And so that's an example there of uh, creating um, ellipses. You can also click and drag the ellipse or the uh, foci here in the ellipse in order to change its uh, eccentricity as well as the semi-major and semi-minor um, axes. Also, if you click the outer point here, you can kind of rotate the um, ellipse around the location of the foci. The create a polyline um, option right here is the same thing as uh, creating a line except for when you make the second point of the line it'll automatically uh, want to create a new line here and so this is uh, usually what you would use to create um, the basic form of an object um, so that you don't have to keep making uh, new lines like with the line option now if you make a whole bunch of lines with the polyline and you want to go back and change it uh, the easiest way to do so is to go ahead and select whichever line you want to delete and select edit delete and then you can go over and if you want to make another line there just uh, click the first point using the line tool and click the second point in order to change um, a line that you've made with the polyline tool. The rectangle tool here is pretty straightforward. It creates a rectangle in the sketch. So you can click the polygon tool or click this little arrow next to the polygon tool in order to choose um, the type of polygon that you'd like to create from triangle all the way up to octagon. So once you choose the polygon you'd like, the first um, click that you make will be for the center. And then the second click that you make will be um, for the uh, radial measurement from the center. So the create a slot in the sketch option here is used to create a kind of rounded rectangle, if you will, in the sketch. And the uh, first click you make is going to be for the size of the uh, radius. Um, of the curve of the rectangle. So after you make your first click you'll notice that the radius will extend outward um, based on the difference in either the uh, X or the Y dimension here whichever uh, way you choose to make the slot. Now once you're done creating the slot here you can go ahead and click and drag in order to change the uh, length of the individual sizes or what you can do is click and drag the points on the edges to um, extend or change the size of the entire slot. So this option here, create a fillet between two lines, is useful for creating a curve between two points or two lines like for the example we have here. So if we go ahead and click the um, create a fillet and we click the uh, first line here and we click the second line, it'll create a curve between those two lines. Then we can scale the uh, size of the lines and the uh, curve by clicking on the radius here. Or what we can do is just change the size of the individual lines here. And you can also change um, the uh, radius of the curve by clicking one of the points near the curve and dragging it. 
Now I want to talk about um, constraints, which is this option here, and they are also created when you make a straight line or connect two points for an arc or um, anything else like that. When constraints are created, uh, they appear down here in the uh, constraints uh, submenu here in the um, combo view for sketching. And you might have seen them before when I was demoing the uh, create different geometries here. So, for instance, when I create a straight line, you'll notice next to my uh, cursor and the little line icon, there's a, a small straight red line there. That means that when the line is created, it's going to be created with a straight constraint here. So, no matter how I move this line here, it stays straight no matter what. However, you can delete constraints like uh, you delete uh, geometry objects in the sketch by uh, clicking the constraint either here in the project view or over here in the constraints uh, list and going to edit and delete. Now that the constraint's gone, you'll notice that when I click and drag a point on this line here, it no longer stays straight and um, it can move freely in all directions. So there's an option to turn off um, automatic constraints on a sketch, like for instance if you make a straight line or uh, if you connect a point to an axis here or to another object, um, the uh, program will automatically uh, make the constraint for you based on um, the object that you created. But you can uh, turn off these auto constraints by going underneath the um, edit control pull down menu in the combo view here and unchecking auto constraint. So sometimes when you're creating a sketch, uh, you'll notice a little message underneath the solver message here saying that there's redundant constraints in the sketch. An example of a redundant constraint is uh, this line right here along the axis. Uh, so as you can see, there's two um, constraints connecting the points on this line to the axis, and there's also a straight line um, constraint on this line. So basically these two constraints are doing the same job as this and that's an example of a redundant constraint. So if we wanted to get rid of this um, uh, remove the redundant constraint message we could either get rid of both of these constraints here or get rid of the one um, lock vertical or lock horizontal line constraint here. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that and once we do that the uh, duplicate restraint message will go away. And uh, for that example, we could have removed um, both of these as well, um, whichever you prefer, basically. Since there's a redundant constraint, there's automatically going to be at least two, um, two things doing the same job, basically, so you could get rid of either one. So that's uh, an example of the first kind of constraint here. Uh, create a horizontal constraint or uh, create a, a vertical constraint. And let's say um, I made a, a not straight line and I wanted to uh, constrain it so that it always stays straight if I move other points around it, I would click the line and then choose the uh, create a horizontal constraint on the selected line. So they can be created automatically or you can uh, create them yourself by selecting objects and then choosing one of the constraint options here. The next uh, constraint that I want to talk about is um, fixing a, a line or a point to a specific object. So if I move the um, create line um, option and my cursor over the axis here, you'll see that um, a little kind of a half arc icon with a dot on it appears next to the um, cursor. And that constraint keeps the line connected to the axis no matter how it's moved. So if we create a line here uh, connected to the axis, you'll notice that there's a new constraint here which is the same as fix a point onto an object. So no matter how I move this line now, it'll always be connected to the axis. So this type of constraint is useful, for instance, if I have a symmetrical object here, and I want to move the uh, constraint in either direction, but still have it locked to the axis here. So what I can do is just click and drag, and since both lines are locked to the axis, I can just go ahead and scale the object in a specific dimension here. So let's say I wanted to move just one line here and keep the other line um, connected to the axis. What you can do to get rid of the one constraint is just select the constraint and then go into delete and now when you move this 
you can move the um, selected line either up and down or off the axis or wherever it is you want to go. So that's an example of locking to a um, specific point or a line. This type of constraint can also appear if we're connecting uh, new geometry to existing geometry. So let's say we want to create an arc uh, with the center here on the radius, and we want to connect the first part of the arc to uh, the line at this position right here. We'll go ahead and click to make the first point, and then we move over to the other line until the um, connect object or point to another object constraint appears next to the cursor, and that way we can uh, create a constraint so that the arc is connected to both of these lines here. So now when we move these lines, the arc will move with it. And we can move this in either direction here as long as both of them are connected in order to um, keep the arc connected to that point on the uh, line. And if we didn't want the arc to be locked to the uh, center point of the axis here, we could just do the same thing. Select the center point for the arc and go into delete. And now what we can do is just click and drag to move around the center of the arc. And you'll notice that the uh, two constrained um, parts of the arc are still connected to the lines and will stay connected as long as the constraints exist. The next constraint in the constraint menu here is for uh, keeping two lines parallel to each other. So for instance, let's say I wanted to uh, be able to move these lines around here in the sketch but I wanted to keep them parallel no matter where they're moved. Well, in order to do that, I would select the uh, first object, hit command and select the uh, second line, and then choose the um, keep parallel between two lines option. And you'll notice here that uh, a new constraint is created with the parallel uh, icon here and a number next to it. And that number is the corresponds to the number in the list of constraints over here in the combo view. And we can also do the uh, same thing over here on the other side so that these lines will stay constrained. And you'll notice that um, this constraint is number, number 16 since it came after uh, number 15 over here. Now when we move these lines around, no matter how we move them or in what direction we move them, they'll always stay parallel to each other. And this is a really useful constraint um, for uh, objects that have uh, different side lengths and stuff but still need to always remain parallel. We can also move the uh, objects in this direction and move both of them um, at once and in that way we're moving the entire figure around to kind of scale the uh, size of the uh, sides and the uh, little center option here. The next constraint in the menu here is for a perpendicular line constraint and so let's say we have this line and this line which are perpendicular to each other we can go ahead and select the first line and select the second line and then we can choose to create a perpendicular constraint between the two then we can go ahead and go over here and do the same thing with the other two now you'll notice when I click a point and move it around the, the um, lines will always stay perpendicular to each other no matter how they're moved uh, which is uh, really useful for different types of shapes and objects. Okay, for our next constraint example, which is the um, tangent constraint here, let's say, for instance, we have two circles here at equidistant points, um, but in opposite directions, and we have a line um, bisecting them. So let's say we want to lock the um, sides of the circle to this line so that when we move the line the circles will uh, change size and radius to compensate for the movement of the line. So in order to do this we can go ahead and uh, click the um, first circle and then hit command and click the line and hit the um, create a tangent constraint between two entities. And when you do that you'll see that the circle is now locked onto the line with the new constraint right here. And we can go ahead and do the same thing for the um, other side here as well. Go ahead and hit command and click the line and hit a uh, create a tangent constraint between two entities. Now you'll see that when we move the line, the uh, two circles that are connected to it will automatically um, change their radius in order to stay connected to that line. I also want to point out that um, you can delete multiple constraints at once like you can with elements in the sketch. So for instance, if we wanted to delete both of these constraints, we could uh, hit the, click the first one, uh, 
hold down command and then click the second one and go into edit and delete and there we go we got rid of the uh, constraints so you can get rid of elements in the sketch um, and constraints the, uh, the same way by shift um, by um, command clicking them or selecting them individually and then going into edit and delete for the next constraint in the uh, constraint menu here let's uh, use this example and say that we want to be able to move the sides of this um, X around but um, we want when we move the lines we want them to always be the uh, same length so that's what this equals um, equality constraint does so let's say we want to uh, go ahead and select our first line and the second line for our equals constraint and go ahead and click that and then we can go ahead and click the top and the bottom and create an equality constraint and so that way when we move this side here the other side will compensate for the movement and it'll also stay the same length. Now another example of this is if we wanted to have them all connected to each other we could click after we created the first constraint and the second constraint we could click one side and then click the other and then go ahead and hit another equality constraint and so now all four sides will move at the same time in order to compensate each other which is a really interesting kind of tool. We can also do this uh, with these um, two sides as well. So let's go ahead and make an equality constraint here and another constraint here, a constraint here, and another constraint here. And then finally, we'll link the two dimensions together. So we'll take one from here and equal it with this one here. And so now, the whole thing can be moved and stretched and scaled and um, all four sides will still say, stay the same size. So that's really a kind of interesting and useful constraint. So the last constraint in the um, constraint selection menu here is the symmetry constraint. The symmetry constraint is used to keep two points or lines at an equal distance apart from a line or a point. So, for instance, if we wanted to um, have these points across the axis here be symmetrical in their distance from the axis, we could use a, a symmetry constraint here. So, in order to create a symmetry constraint, we would go ahead and click the uh, first point, hit Command, and then click the uh, line that we want them to be symmetrical across, and then hit the uh, second point here, and then we would hit the uh, create symmetry constraint and as you can see these uh, little arrows will appear next to the dots and um, the there will also be an X that appears on the um, axis here showing the symmetry between the uh, points and so we could go ahead and uh, continue to do this for all the points on this um, object here so that when we uh, move on one side of the object uh, the um, same movement will occur on the other side of the object. So now that we've created symmetry constraints on all of the points along the sketch here, whenever we move um, one point a distance away, the um, same point will be moved the same amount on the opposite side of whatever line we chose or whatever point we chose as the symmetry point. And you can do this with um, points that are not on the axis. For instance, if you had a point over here, and then you wanted some, something symmetrical across it, you could make a point here and use a symmetry constraint on a point on either side of it to create the same kind of thing. So it's not limited to uh, just the axis. You can do it pretty much anywhere. And you can also do it uh, up and down and instead of side to side. So that's really useful for uh, symmetrical objects. There's a couple other things um, next to the uh, Create Constraints menu here that I want to talk about. Um, and these are useful for locking in certain features of a sketch. So the first one here is to uh, lock a uh, selected item so that it's, uh, it can't be moved um, at all, which is useful for some objects that have um, certain areas that can't be moved while some others can be. So let's say we wanted to lock this point to uh, its location uh, right now. We would select the point and hit the Create Lock Constraint and it would be locked to this uh, position which is uh, 70 millimeters in the uh, y-axis and 70 millimeters in the z-axis. 
So once this point's been locked, it can't be moved around anymore, which is useful if you've had if you've created other constraints that might um, cause this point to move um, and you need it to stay there, that's what this is, uh, lock constraint is very useful for. The uh, next constraint is a horizontal distance between two points or lines. So for instance, let's say we wanted to keep the base of this object um, this specific length. We can use the lock horizontal distance in order to keep its length a certain length apart. So for instance, right now it's locked at 180 millimeters, but we can uh, change that length before we lock it to like 170. And we can also name the um, length. So let's go ahead and just put length in here. And you'll see when you click uh, lock horizontal and you change the distance between the two points, it'll um, automatically change the distance and it'll um, create a uh, name for that length as well. Underneath the constraints menu here, you'll see that the uh, horizontal line constraint has been created called length, which is what we uh, called it. And it's also um, got the distance between the uh, two points listed as well. So just like the uh, horizontal uh, length constraint, there's also a vertical uh, length constraint. So if we wanted to lock the uh, specific length of this line here to 10 millimeters, we would select the line and go up to a vertical length constraint, enter the length that we want, and we can also call it a name such as we did with the horizontal constraint. So I'll just call this uh, vertical one. And you'll notice it does the same thing as the horizontal constraint on the constraint list here. You can see uh, vert one and 10 millimeters. And if you double click the option for the um, length, the horizontal length or the vertical length lock, you can change its length as well as its name. Um, and so that's useful for uh, changing um, constraints on uh, line lengths that you have already created. So the next um, constraint option here is to fix the length um, between a line and a point. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to fix the length between this line and the point on the top here. We can go ahead and select both and then go ahead and click to fix the distance between those two. And just like the horizontal lock and the vertical lock, it gives us an option for the length as well as the name. So you'll notice that it does the same type of thing as the horizontal and vertical lock. It will appear over here on the um, constraint window. And this can be changed as well by uh, double clicking and changing the length or the name. So you'll see if I move this point here, that the length between the um, point and the line that we just created will stay constant. Um, we also have a symmetrical um, constraint active here too which is kind of interesting to see. The next constraint on the list here um, fixes the radius of a circle or an arc so that if you move the uh, lines around it or the points around it that are connected to it, the, the arc will stay constant. So let's go ahead and select the uh, first arc we have here and go ahead and uh, lock the radius. And um, just as the uh, rest of these options work, you can enter the uh, radius that's already there or change the radius and you can also enter a name so let's just call this rad1 and you'll notice just like the uh, vertical horizontal and uh, vertex lock here that a, a new constraint will appear underneath the constraints window and you can double click it in order to change the radius and the name and so now when we move a point here this radius will stay always constant. And we can do the same thing on the other side here. And it's very useful for fixing specific radiuses if you have an object that requires a specific radius. So for the uh, last option we're gonna talk about in the list here, um, it's used to fix an angle of a line or an angle between two lines. So for example, we have this uh, object or the shape here in the sketch and if we wanted to um, lock the angle of this line or the angle between these two lines here, we could do so using the um, fix the angle constraint here. So let's go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and just lock this one the way it is right now. And we can fix a, the angle at a specific angle and also name it just like the others we did here. 
or we could just go ahead and uh, press OK for the uh, way it is now. We can also um, lock an angle between two lines. So for example, if we wanted to lock the angle between uh, this line and this line here, we could do the same thing. And we could also do the same thing on the other side here, so that when this is moved, it automatically scales the object and keeps the um, angles constant. So now that we've talked about creating sketch elements as well as creating uh, constraints in the sketch, I want to talk a little bit about um, moving or changing the placement of a sketch um, and also rotating a sketch to a different face or uh, in a different direction. So you can exit out of your sketch at any time just by hitting the close button here and then to get back into the sketch you can just double click it here um, in order to get back in and re-edit your points. So this sketch is um, sketched to the front face uh, right here at an offset of zero. But if we wanted to move the sketch around, we could do it just like we did with primitive objects. And uh, like we did with the placement uh, or the offset of sketches when we first created them. So we can go into placement here and we can change the offset in any direction of the sketch just like we did with primitive objects. If you want to rotate a um, sketch, um, you can go into uh, Euler Angles here, and the reason this sketch, uh, the front face, is at 90 degrees is because all sketches are kind of um, predetermined to be from the um, top view. So a front view would be 90 degrees, and a side view would be at a 90 degree um, yaw. So the reason a sketch on the side has 90 yaw and 90 roll is because that's the position relative to the um, top view, which is where uh, sketches are kind of um, originate from in a way. That's their default position. So when you create a sketch on a different face, the program automatically rotates it um, in order to get it to the position that you'd like. And you can change the rotation of your shape by uh, doing the same thing. So if, for instance, I wanted to have uh, the sketch um, a, a, as a side view instead of as a front view, I would just change the yaw until I got the uh, position that I wanted. You can also uh, mess with the uh, Euler angles here if you need to flip your face um, to the uh, bottom view, or you can also um, edit the pitch to uh, flip it upside down if you need to be as well. So uh, that's an example of moving um, uh, sketches around if you need to. Another example I want to talk about is uh, for symmetrical sketches. So let's say I did the first half of this sketch here, and I didn't want to uh, go through finding all the individual points again. What I could do is copy the first sketch here and paste it, and then go underneath the placement and flip it in order to find the um, points for the uh, second half. And when I uh, finish uh, placing the um, copied sketch, I would just go back into the first sketch. And you can see when you zoom in, all the points are kind of predefined here. So it's um, easier to uh, make symmetrical sketches if you just do the first half and then flip it. And then once you're done making the second half, you can just close it out and delete the copied um, sketch that you used as a template. Also, if you want to check the um, sym symmetricality of your sketch, you can copy the finished sketch and paste it, and then go underneath placement and flip it just like we did before. And that way you'll see, like in this example here, that these um, two arcs aren't symmetrical. So you could go back in to the original sketch here and uh, either move this one to match the other side or move this side to match um, the opposite side. So that's an example of checking the symmetricality of uh, sketches. So now that we've talked about uh, sketches and their placement, let's talk a little bit about how to um, create 3D objects out of our finished uh, 2D sketches. So the um, options for uh, creating um, 3D objects out of 2D sketches are located along here. And the most basic version is called the pad. And the pad button is uh, located right here, pad a selected sketch. And so um, when you click the pad button here, you'll see that your shape automatically uh, turns into a 3D object with a specific length and a dimension which is defined by the face that you chose. 
So for this example, the uh, sketch was created in the front face, so when I create a pad from it, the um, length will automatically go in the positive direction for the front and back view. But if you want to switch the direction that the pad is going in, you can select a reverse option here, and um, you can also split it 50-50 uh, by uh, selecting a symmetrical to plane here. So in that way, it'll split the length um, in two, and one goes in the positive direction, and five goes in the other direction. So um, you can place uh, whichever way you would like, depending on your project and your needs, and you can also choose um, to change the length by uh, either using the up and down arrow keys or entering a um, predetermined uh, length that you would like. So once you've done that, you can press OK. And you'll notice in the combo view here, the sketch will have disappeared and in its place will be a pad. So when you click the side arrow to see the subfolder of this pad, you can see that the uh, sketch is uh, underneath it and it's grayed out. But if you need to go back and change the sketch, you can go ahead and double click on your um, sketch and then edit the points here. And then when you're done with that, the, the pad will automatically update based on the changes um, that you apply to the sketch. So that's a way to uh, create a uh, basic 3D object and um, edit it once you've created it. You can also um, edit the position of the original sketch, hit apply, and the pad will move with it. So another option for creating 3D shapes out of uh, 2D sketches is um, the uh, revolution um, function here. The revolution function revolves an object in a sketch around a specific axis based on where that object is located relative to its sketch's axis. So for example, this uh, first one here is on the um, horizontal axis and uh, not the vertical axis. So if we make a revolution of this one, we could make a, a vertical revolution, but we can't make a, a horizontal revolution since the sketch is located on the uh, horizontal axis. You'll notice that the radius of the revolution is based on the object's distance um, from its sketch's zero point. So for example, if we went back into here and moved the uh, object here, and we uh, close this up and uh, make another revolution uh, that it is uh, farther away from the zero point because we moved it. The other type of revolution you can do is called a, a horizontal revolution. And in this case, the um, object in the sketch is located on the uh, vertical axis here. And in that way, um, it can be revolved around the uh, horizontal axis. So if we go into the create revolution function here and we select horizontal sketch axis, you'll notice that the um, revolution of the sketch is around the horizontal um, axis as opposed to the um, other revolution which is based around the vertical axis. So if you have a sketch with an object that's not located on either the vertical or the horizontal axes, you can uh, create a, a revolution of either kind with an object such as that, since it's not located on either of the axes. And same thing with uh, pads. If you create a revolution, you'll notice here um, the sketch will be replaced by a revolution with a number after it based on how many you've created. And in the sub uh, menu here, you can uh, go back and edit your original sketch and uh, once you've finished editing your sketch and you press close, you'll notice that the revolution will also change with it. So that's a really uh, useful way to um, change revolutions once they've been created. You can also um, choose the uh, angle of the uh, revolution um, that you'd like. So if you don't want an entire circle, you can choose, um, like for instance, 45 degrees or um, a quarter, which is 90 degrees. So that's uh, very useful for creating um, circular type objects or um, arc like type objects. So the reason that um, sketches allow you to create uh, complex objects that you couldn't do with primitives is because you can create um, complex objects um, using uh, different dimensions. 
So, for instance, like the front of an object is more, is different than the side of an object, so you can create a complex object by having two different faces. So, for instance, uh, we created a front face pad here and a um, horizontal pad here, and if we go into the uh, part window here, we can select both of these and create an intersection in order to make a complex object that we couldn't be able to make uh, that we wouldn't be able to make with uh, primitive shapes. So that's kind of an overview of what you can do with part design, sketching, and um, stuff like that. Now we're going to look at something else you can do with sketches called sweeping, um, which is this button right here located in the part workbench. Although the sweep function is located in the part workbench, you kind of need sketches and other like faces to go along with it from um, the part design workbench. So. We'll go ahead and take a look at what it is and what it does. So basically this sweep function is used to trace a sketch or a face along a wireframe or another face. In this example I've set up here, I'm going to be creating uh, threads, like threads on a screw, using this sketch I created and this helix I made from the primitive menu right here. So when you want to sweep an object, press one of the objects and press the utility to sweep function here. You'll see in the combo view here, it'll say vertex edge wireframe, and that's the object or the wireframe that's going to be traced upon, while the sweep is the actual object that's going to be sweeped along the face or wire, whatever it is. So I'm going to move the sketch over here, and I want to create a solid, and then you select using the command function um, the object that you want to be the wire face. For some reason, it doesn't let me select the object. It doesn't recognize it when I press it here. It, will, it, it tells me to select an object, so I just use Command to select the different parts of the helix here. Once you had done that, you can press OK. And as you see, it'll create the sweep along the helix that we had before. And you'll notice when I create a sweep, both the original um, objects will be visible here the sketch as well as the helix. So you can go back and change things if you want. If you change the helix here, the sweep should change along with it. Same is true with the sketch here. So if we change the sketch, we should be also changing the sweep. So as you see, it kind of automatically updates itself with whatever changes um, relative to whatever objects are involved in its creation. I want to show another example here of sweeping and how you can kind of de-evolve a solid object into wireframes so that you can trace objects along them. So if you go into the um, draft uh, panel here underneath the pull down menu, you'll see uh, all these different tools but the one that we're looking at for de-evolving objects is this one right here. So it kind of explodes a selected object into similar shapes and faces. So if we press the de-evolve button, I don't know, that's just what I call it, it'll change the prism here into a bunch of different faces. And these are all the different sides. First are listed here, and then you have the top and uh, the top and the bottom face here. So let's go ahead and use the bottom face. Now when we select the bottom face and select de-evolve again, it'll turn it into a wire, as you can see here. Now, whenever you go to the draft menu, it shows up this little grid here in the background, and it'll keep showing that until you exit the program. Um, I think you can turn it off by just hitting this button here, if it annoys you. So you can go back, let's go back to part here, and what I want to do is rotate the wire so that the circle is along the flat side. So let's go ahead and rotate that by 90 degrees. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a sweep here. If you press the sweep up, uh, button again, and then we can press the sketch here that's going to be doing the sweeping. And then we can choose the wire frames all along here using control from the existing wire. Uh, select these guys here, and then press OK. And as you can see, the circle sketch has been traced along the uh, hexagon wire that we had before, which is really neat for creating like interesting shapes along a polygon or anything like that in that nature, which is useful. Like if you have a design that's in a straight line, you can kind of 
revolve it around a polygon or any other type of object. You can do this with like ellipses and stuff like that. If you go to primitive objects here, you can see like spiral, circle, ellipse, and polygon, all that kind of stuff. So, and you can also de-evolve complex objects in order to trace along their wires using the uh, de-evolution button, I guess is what I call it, under the draft menu here, which is really neat for creating uh, interesting types of shapes.